Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the impact of clouds on spotting units. Now clouds are kind of an interesting thing in this game because they're fairly well abstracted. Uh, when we normally have clouds, of course, people think of big puffy things like we see in the sky, and anybody who's flown a lot of flight simulators can tell you how wonderful it is to not be able to see things uh, because clouds are uh, basically blocking your view. Now, one of the things that makes it kind of interesting is if we actually open up our editor real quick and we pop down to our edit weather kind of a thing like that, what you're gonna notice is the fact that we only have one bar for clouds. We can't say we want clouds at 5,000 and 8,000. And they're broken into a couple different categories. The first one is gonna be basically the light clouds. Uh, you can see here, light low clouds, five to 7,000 feet. Uh, this is courage of VFR pilots. When I drag this bar up a little bit further, you'll notice we get the word moderate. I pull it a little bit further. We get very moderate clouds. If I pull it any further than that, you get what they call solid clouds. And of course, past solid, you get straight up thick fog. Now, they notice the interesting thing here is a thin fog is basically uh, going to be pretty nasty. But when people think of like overclassed, like if you're thinking sort of like a rainstorm, a rainstorm is basically this line right here. And we can actually like that and create a bit of rain too, if you're doing that kind of weather modeling. Now for us, this is going to have a big impact on spotting things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this all the way to the left here to delete all the clouds and leaving the sea state alone. And we have our nice uh, jet here. This jet is now 50 years old. Uh, look it up. It's sad, isn't it? <clears throat> I actually, it might not be sad. It might actually be kind of lukewarm. So what we're going to do here is we're going to kind of scoot across and we're going to see if you notice anything. Whoa, full stop, full stop, full stop. We spotted some things. Oh, let's see what we have here. Ah, of course, it's an Osa 2. A wasp, by the way, is the magic word for that one. So we take a look at this one, and uh, we spotted it at about 19.3 nautical miles. As a matter of fact, let's make this slightly more scientific today. So what I'm going to do is go up to game options real quick. Message log. When we spot a new unit, um, we're actually going to go ahead and uh, say something here. New weapon contact. Uh, let's see, a new contact. We're going to make it actually stop the game so that we can see it very clearly. Make it, again, for science's purposes. So anyway, we spotted them about 20. Stop. And we also spotted these guys at about eh, about 8 to 10 or something like that. About, yeah, about 10 nautical miles. Not bad. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and uh, grab this here. Go ahead and uh, hit test again. We're going to go grab the wrong side for about the 50th time here. Grab our block. And now we're going to introduce some clouds. Uh, the first cloud, of course, we're going to be interested in introducing is going to be the light kind of crunchy clouds. If you take a look here when I hold my mouse, you'll see this light high clouds between 20 and 23,000 feet. One of the cool things here is if I click here and press F2, it actually shows you a visual representation of the clouds uh, right here to make it a little bit simpler. If we wanted to hide in the clouds, we could actually drag this into the middle here. Now, if we wanted to cheat a little, of course, we could drag this below the clouds and get a really good look. But uh, we're interested to see if you're still able to acquire those targets on the ground and in the water. Here we go. Ah, interesting. So you immediately sit here and go, wait, what? Those high clouds completely blocked my F-16 from spotting anything? Is that supposed to work that way? Yes, it actually gets more interesting. And uh, let me show you why. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, load everything back up again real quickly. I'll make sure my clouds are exactly the same as they were a few moments ago, which I believe they are. Uh, looks good, looks good, looks good, looks good. I'm going to go ahead and uh, let my F-16 uh, scoot, scoot across the sky, sky again. And uh, watch. Completely, completely invisible. So in this case, um, once we have introduced clouds, we have basically made it impossible to see things through them. Now, it gets a little more fascinating, at least, again, things I find fascinating, things you find fascinating might be a little bit different, but that's okay. But let's go ahead and grab our F-16 buddy again. And uh, this time, we're actually going to change his altitude a little bit. You cannot see through cloud layers. Uh, that's the first thing. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to shove him into the cloud layer like this. So my F-16 buddy is actually going to fly right in the dead center of the clouds. And you'll notice once again, we didn't see anything. And again, remember these are light broken clouds we're dealing with here. And we're flying right over the heads of the potential targets that we actually have. And we have a pod to make our life a little bit simpler. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab it and I'm actually gonna pull him below the clouds. I will do a nice 18,000 uh, flight level 180 here. Looks pretty good to me. Let's go ahead and unpause. Now he's underneath that cloud layer. Ah, also, did you notice the new contact didn't show up? I'm actually a little annoyed about that. I must have messed something up. I probably did not click the button. No, I definitely did not click the button when I click. No, I definitely did that. Huh. Oh, yes, it worked. It worked. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It puts time scale to one. It doesn't freeze the game. But we can see very clearly that we picked them up at exactly the same distance because of the fact we are now underneath that cloud layer. 
So as we can see, clouds actually act as almost like a physical barrier, which is actually very interesting. But uh, we're in this for science, so uh, we're going to keep going with a little example here. And we're going to make things a little different. What if our targets down here on the ground had some kind of queuing for the vision devices we have on board our aircraft? So let's help them out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the help of a good old-fashioned TU-95RT. And uh, the reason I like the TU-95RT is because it's got a big old-school radar on it, and it's going to work perfectly for examples here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip on that radar, just like that, and he's going to start looking around. Now, one of the cool things here is he's going to communicate with our F-16 buddy over here to say, hey, I spotted a bunch of skunks. Uh, can you identify those skunks? So I'm going to go grab my F-16 buddy here, and we'll go ahead and speed up time a little bit. And what I'm going to try to do is see if our F-16 can actually identify them as he flies over. Remember, this is the same light high clouds that we saw before or above those light high clouds. And you'll notice my F-16 had no ability to identify those targets. It still could not physically see through these clouds for the purpose of actually engaging a target. Now, people are saying, well, that's actually starting to get a little tricky. Uh, that could be a bit of a problem. Yes, and it gets more fun, too. Because if I actually were to move forward uh, just a little bit here, uh, we have a pretty hefty range on that. Let me get a little bit closer. There we go. One of the things we actually are packing on my lovely little F-16 here is we actually have these Maverick Ks. Uh, these are pretty cool Mavericks. Uh, they have this uh, fantastically long range on them. And they also have the ability, of course, to use an inference seeker. So the question becomes, if I press Shift F1 and I left click on the skunk, you're gonna notice that I must detect the target prior to firing. So now if I were to just let this thing rip, I'll go ahead and do that just for the purpose of demonstration, you'll notice that we targeted as a bad guy and we're just gonna sail right over its head. You're sitting here going, no, that makes no sense. It, 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 wh why, why didn't you attack him? Because our F-16 has no concept of where that target physically is. The only thing the F-16 sees is there's a data linked target being provided for him. Now, I know what you're saying. You're saying here, well, what if the F-16 used his radar too? Would he be able to fire? Well, let's take a look. Sensors, radars. Now, remember, the F-16 has a very good air-to-ground radar, and it will have no difficulty spotting, especially a little wasp. Those are not, not the hardest targets to see. So let's go ahead now, press Shift-Tab again, or Shift-F1, and you'll notice we're out of range this time. We're not out of detection. So we'll get a little bit closer. We'll get a little tiny bit closer. F-16 is getting into range. I'm trying to line this up as evenly as I possibly can. All right, let's shift F1 one more time. Uh, notice, target must, weapon must detect target prior to firing. The problem here now is remember that IR seeker on the nose of this is also having the same limitation as our aircraft does. We cannot physically see the target for the purposes of engaging him. So what I can do here is I can go ahead and I'll drop his altitude. Now let's go down to fly level 180 again. Go ahead and I'll back him up just a tiny bit here so we can go basically dive through the clouds here. We have a really fun new thing they added to command, by the way, but that's okay. So we're in the cloud layer. If you wonder where that cloud layer is here, you can see it's out right there. We're about to sip through it. Now, the interesting thing here is if I press Shift F1 and click it, it just says we're out of range. So let's get a little bit closer here. Of course, uh, he's going to fire the moment he gets into range and ruin my fun here, but that's okay. That happens sometimes. It's a little bit closer. Cool. I like that. So if I click on him, you will now see I can fire. As a matter of fact, off it goes. Now, the question you're probably asking yourself is, is one Maverick good enough to uh, wreck an Osa K here? And, um, eh, here it comes. Let's see here. This AGM Maverick. It's uh, got some pretty good explosive potential here. Let's see here. It does 61 damage points. My OSA. Let's take a look here. My OSA. How many damage points in an OSA? You want to watch the explosion. <laughs> you know that was going to happen, right? And if you come down here to our damage points, you'll see it's 64. It takes more than that, of course. And But you'll notice... He promptly sunk. As a matter of fact, uh, one of the fun things we could do here is we can actually go over here and we can click on him. We can go over here and uh, we can see that he basically sunk. Uh, his initial damage was pretty serious damage. And if we actually go to damage control, obviously he's, he's splattered here. But um, significant component damage. Uh, there's radar got boasted. His diesels got smoked. Is yeah, one of your de um, engines get hit. That usually means you're flooding in the engine room. It's pretty bad. Additional heavy damage and... He decided to go swimming. Also kind of interesting here. I have a BDA report here that says uh, the damage, uh, he's no fire and he's flooding. You think? <laughs> oh, one fun thing, by the way, is we have a little thing now that tells us what our rudder setting is. Isn't that cool? It's just sort of one of those things. 
So as you can see, the uh, clouds in this system are basically going to be a fixed object. We can't visualize the clouds. You know, if they're big puffy kind of poofs or something like that, that we could basically look and be able to figure out, oh, I want to make my guy like, go like this through the air to get through the clouds. We don't have that yet. So we have simply a more simplified kind of way of handling it. And certain radars, of course, have a difficult time penetrating through clouds, especially with systems that are really, really high frequencies, like weapons and stuff that we're guiding up into the air. Now you're sitting here going, okay, that makes satellites basically useless if there's a cloud in the air. And I go... Yeah, <laughs> but the key thing is there's other types of satellites out there, and of course. And then everybody else, of course, says, well, is it possible to make like cloud here and cloud here? The answer is yes, but that is for another video. Enjoy.